Yorks. I'm a professional screenwriter and welcome to my channel. I am very new to the whole YouTube of it all, so just bear with me as I launch my new series that I'm so excited about. It's called The First Five. And in this series, I invite followers of mine on TikTok or Twitter or Instagram and now YouTube to submit the first five pages of their script, be it a pilot or a feature. And I will read it here with you all on, on YouTube. And you'll see that the script is going to be on one side of the screen and then I will be on the other and we'll go through it together. And I'll basically just give my thoughts, my, my feedback, and then say whether or not I would pass on this script as is in its current form, or if I would want to keep reading to see what happens next. So before we get started, I just ask that you hit that subscribe button and follow me at the handle at Julia Yorks on TikTok and Instagram and Twitter. So let's get started. So the first script that I picked for this series is actually the very first submission that I got, and that is from Stephen M. Levinson. Stephen, you are the very first person to submit your five pages. Stephen submitted the first five pages of his screenplay called The Hallway, and let's dive in. You're going to see it on one of the hands of your screen and we'll go through it together and kind of explore what I think is interesting about it because I think there's a lot of really good stuff here. It's a great submission to start with and launch our series. We open interior public restroom morning, which is already evoking uh, a certain kind of vibe. Sunlight casts angelic rays through the window while dust particles dance in the light. Huh, that's an opposing image of kind of what I expected from a public restroom. A sense of tranquility pervades the shadowy space. Okay. Without warning, a violent pounding on the locked entrance door shatters the calmness. The handle jerks frantically as an impatient voice cries out, Noah. And then we meet Noah, who I assume is our protagonist, and he is polished but visibly disturbed. Okay. So just from this opening, I'm in it. I like it. I think that the, the action is really concise but descriptive. I, I'm seeing a visual. It's kind of contradictory because I think of a public restroom as being something kind of gross, but he has it as being this calm space that is then shattered by whomever is outside the door. Um, and we have this you know, polished guy who clearly something is, is going on. And there's the pounding Noah, they're waiting. And Noah holds up a small photo, but the image is dark, so we don't know what's in the photo, but it's something that brings him comfort. And then he says it won't be long, which to me, I'm like, okay, this is foreboding. Um, there's something there's something intriguing. Plants a kiss on the photo and then tucks it into the coat pocket. So who is the photo of? I'm, I'm already intrigued. I, I want to know more. Taking it slow, cautious steps towards the shuttering door. Again, great with that imagery, like imagery. Someone's really, really pounding on this door. I love that. Um, he kind of adjusts and then a tiny mouse zips by. So again, it's just, okay, what is actually going on here? Because it's supposed to be this place of serene and calm and yet there's a mouse, which would freak me the hell out. And then the voice says, it's time, Noah. And this is in bold, so I know it's important. Shifting focus back to the door, he reaches for the lock, hands trembling. Okay, I'm, I'm into this. I need to know what's behind that door. I want to know what's happening. I feel like this first page draws me in and paints a vivid picture. I'm confused by some of the imagery. imagery. It doesn't seem to go together quite yet but it seems like this script is wanting to disorient me a bit. So our second scene, page two, interior conference room moments later. A live stream interview is underway with a young woman, Emily, and various staff are there too. And she's saying, congrats on making the cover of Forbes 40 Under 40. Okay, and in the script, it really says what I'm thinking, which is, wait, what? what? What is happening? What's going on? A round of applause fills the room and we're in the Forbes offices all of a sudden. Okay, so we just had a video call, but now we're in the Forbes offices. So 
okay, we're, we're figuring this out. Oversized magazine, right. So it's really painting the picture of the Forbes office. I'm not sure at this point if Emily is on the live stream video or if Noah is. Like, is he in the office or is she in the office? Or are they both in the office? Um, unclear to me what's exactly happening in this scene. And it seems as though that might be the intention that I'm supposed to be a little confused and, and not quite sure what's happening. Um, but, you know, it does help to know a bit and maybe I'll find out as I dig deeper. So then Emily starts talking about Avaro, which is a company that Noah has created. And she's talking about viral TikToks, collabs with Mr. Beast. So we get the, the gist that this is a, a pretty big deal. And she says, how'd you get here? So kind of a little bit of exposition in a way that feels natural, like an interview is a natural way to get some exposition. And he says, through that door, actually. So, okay, he's funny. He's, he's flirting a little. He's, he's a, he's a charmer. The room laughs. And then, you know, he's saying, if only I were younger, because I guess he's 40 under 40 and not 30 under 30. On the cover, he stares at us with determined vision, alone in a laboratory. And alone is capitalized. So that must be important. And the headline says visionary. And so back to the scene, Noah is still talking and he's filling us in on the mission of Avaro. Like I said, he's giving us some exposition. And I do think this is a little too much exposition. You know, it's talking a lot about ADHD as we move into page three and, and all of the different kind of symptoms that people experience with that. Um, and talking about how he created a new medicine for it. Okay, so he's on the 40 under 40 for creating a new medicine. Amazing, you guys invented it so quickly too. Plus it's not addictive and it's very affordable. Okay, so great. He's, he's created this new super drug, essentially. And he has this moment where he says, are you sure I shouldn't be interviewing you? So he's flirting a bit. Let me get a little nerdy for a second. So we're really getting into the weeds on what makes this medicine, what makes his creation different from say Adderall or other things that are already on the market. And I wonder if there's a way that we can condense this because now we've had almost a full page plus talking about, you know, the, the side effects or the symptoms of, of ADHD and also about the drugs. And I wonder if there's a way that we could streamline this with fewer paragraphs of dialogue here. I think, I think you could. And then he says, Avril doesn't contain any of that. Tell me about you though. Have you been feeling distracted lately? He's definitely coming on to her. Now flustered, she tries to find her words. I mean, this guy is being interviewed for 40 under 40 and he takes the opportunity to hit on his young interviewer I'm starting to wonder if he's less of a charmer and more of like a smarmy kind of dude, right? So as we're getting to page four, she says, it's hard to get anything done with this, holding up her phone. My attention has become deficited, which like attention deficit. I like, I think that's a, a fun line. And he says, trust me, I know exactly what that experience is like reaches into his coat pocket and you think he's gonna pull out his phone, but instead he pulls out a sapphire blue medicine bottle. And he says, unlike most founders who couldn't be further detached from their customers, I use my product every single day. And then he pops a pill and she says, what? And no side effects. I mean, to me, this isn't that revelatory that he's pulling out his medicine and popping a pill because it seems as though he's very well versed in ADHD and the other medications on the market. So I don't know if this is as big of a reveal as Steven wants it to be, but let's keep going. We've no side effects. We've built a remarkable business with rocket ship growth, and we help people overcome a deeply disruptive disorder without side effects. And she says that's seriously impressive as though she's hearing it for the first time, which she seems to be kind of an authority on Noah and on his product. So I wonder if her 
questioning, this line of questioning about the side effects really makes a whole lot of sense and is worth the real estate on the page that this whole chunk takes up. And then he really hits on her, placing his hand on her thigh. Okay, so now is the first time where I'm really getting the clarity of whether or not Emily is in the room with him. And she is. And so I think I needed that to be a little bit clearer earlier on because before it was a video call. So is this in his mind? Like where, where are we, what's happening? And then he says, thank you, I think you are too. Meaning I think you are impressive. So he's fully, fully hitting on her. No shame, very, very bold and brazen for someone being interviewed with, by someone they just met. A phone rings piercing the tension and we're on to page five and it's Noah's phone. Unknown caller may be collections agency. So he's in debt and he declines the call. And then all of a sudden he nearly falls out of his chair because Dr. Yang, bookish and donning a hoodie, all of a sudden appears next to him. Okay, so now it's hitting me that what I'm seeing is maybe not to be believed. He's probably really in a public restroom, having been in a conference room, having a conversation with this woman on FaceTime, but in his mind, he's sitting in the Forbes office. And then all of a sudden, his co-founder and chemist is sitting right next to him. Dr. Yang and Emily exchange confused glances. Glances, who? Glances, glances. And they're just as confused as we are at this point. So something weird is going on. Confused by the introduction, Emily leans back in her chair and then just says, so tell me about your uncle. He's the co-founder of one of the biggest pharmaceutical companies in America. Ah, a little nepotist, right? So this is interesting because if Emily is so confused as to why Dr. Yang just popped up, she doesn't say anything. She just continues with her line of questioning. And again, as an interviewer, and as kind of Noah pointed out earlier, she seems to know literally everything there is to know about Noah, which makes me wonder what the point is to some of her questions. Let's keep going. We're almost to the end here. Noah says that is a factual statement, especially with his contribution to the, but yeah, Noah loses his train of thought. Sorry, was there a question? And then Emily says, your uncle funded Avro from the beginning, right? And that's how we end our first five pages. I'm confused, but I'm intrigued and I want to know more. So off my initial read of these first five pages, and like you guys, I'm I'm going in blind here. I'm, this is the first time that I'm reading these pages. I think there's a lot of positives about these first five. So we're off to a great start with this series. I think that the writing is really strong. The action lines, as I said, are very concise, but paint a picture. The dialogue is clear, and it definitely sounds like the voices of real people, and every person who speaks sounds different. Uh, Emily and Noah, they have very different specific voices, and that is actually a, a skill to be mastered. What I think my biggest feedback would be is if you watch my videos, I talk a lot about real estate on the page, and real estate is really expensive now, and real estate in your script is even more expensive. You only have about a hundred pages, and so you really have to be judicious about what is going to make it onto those pages and what is not going to make it, particularly in your opening. Your opening, first five, first 10, those are the pages that really make or break you as far as the reader goes. And you want to make sure that you are using the most of your real estate on the page. There is a lot of space on the page that is devoted to talking about this medicine, the success of the medicine and how it differentiates itself from other medicines, whether or not it has side effects. And it's just a little much. You could trim, you know, the three pages where you're talking about that into one page, into a couple of lines of dialogue. I think my biggest question is, what is the deal with Emily? Is she a real person? Is she an actual interviewer? And also, what is her intention? Because as I said, her questions, 
and and as Noah says, she is extremely informed. She seems to be already have known everything about Noah that she could possibly know. Uh, and I wonder, I just wonder what's the point of her interview? Is there something deeper that we can get out of this? If we're going to make the most of our real estate on the page, what are the questions that Emily could be asking that could elucidate something new about Noah or about his situation or about his company? Like I think on page two, Emily's first line could be, you know, Avaro is everywhere. And I'm a little confused. Is Avaro and Averall the same? I'm going to treat them for all intents and purposes as the same. Maybe have her opening thing be a bit of exposition for us. Averro is, is everywhere. The number one drug on the market right now, invented quickly, it's not addictive, no side effects, affordable, and you just hit two million customers. And just in that little opening, it's like, okay, great. So now we know everything we need to know and we saved a half a page of dialogue about it. And then I have to wonder about Noah's line of questioning with her when he says, tell me, have you been feeling distracted lately? Is that a ploy to hit on her or something about the phone? Is technology going to be playing a part in this? What is it about the pills? Because as soon as he takes one, he starts losing focus. Is it that the pills are snapping him back to reality, like when the collections agency is calling and he mentally is trying to get back to this fantasy, which is Forbes? I think there's a lot of great stuff here and there's a lot of good confusion that is intriguing without being off-putting, but it's about to hit the point of being off-putting. So I think that's something that you could potentially do within this framework is to weave it in a little bit more clearly of what is clearly real and then what feels a little off. Like, tell us a little bit more what feels off. So for example, he sees the mouse in the bathroom and then we've got a Minnie Mouse poster at Forbes, which I don't think we're really at Forbes at all. Is there a correlation? There's something with mice clearly. Um, so, so what is that? Give us a little bit more there. If it's fantasy, tweak it a little bit more and make it a little bit more weird. So yeah, I think this is cool. I think there's a lot of potential here. There's a lot of great writing, like actual writing. And then I think there needs to be finessing with more of the storytelling. Um, I think you can make better use of your real estate on the page make some cuts and, and condense some exposition to make it feel snappier and faster and, and get us to where you want us to be in a bit quicker of a manner. I think that you can refine Emily a bit to figure out what exactly it is that she wants or what her purpose is. And I think you can blur the lines a bit between reality and fantasy by just making it a little more off. But overall, I would keep reading. I think, Stephen, I think you did a really great job. I'm excited that this was our first foray into the first five. And I actually made a bit of an error when I was first starting this series and I didn't ask people for their log lines. So I'm waiting for Steven to hit me up with his log line because now I wanna know what the story is about and see if I was close to understanding a bit about what the hell is going on. So I'm gonna put his log line right here when I get it. So there it is, the first episode of the first five. I hope you guys liked it. And if you want to submit your own first five pages of your original pilot or movie, just go to the link in my bio and uh, submit. You'll fill out a little submission box and then it'll automatically send you an email with all of the submission instructions. And if you liked this video and you thought it was helpful, please be sure to give us a thumbs up. I'll see you for the next five.